One of the most delicious meals I ever make is a simple roast chicken. Today I'm going to take it step by step through how to do it on a rotisserie at the grill. But when I'm cooking a chicken, roasting it in the oven or on the grill, the first step that I always take because I like the texture and flavor is to brine the chicken. Now I'm going to show you how to make a very standard brine. It's very easy to remember the proportions on this because I'm going to start here with a quart of water that I'm going to put into a saucepan and I'm going to add a cup full of fine ground sea salt to it. Now a standard brine proportion is a quarter of a cup of salt per quart of water and I'm going to make a full gallon of this brine so I need a full cup of salt to do that. But I'm going to add some other flavorings just to add interest to this brine. One of the things that I'm going to put in is a little bit of cone sugar from Mexico. This is piloncillo in Mexico. It's an unrefined sugar with a strong flavor. You could put a third of a cup of dark brown sugar in its place if you want it or just simply use a third of a cup of granulated sugar. Now I'm going to add a little bit of pure ground ancho powder, a couple of tablespoons of that. That's going to add seasonings that I really love and a little bit of garlic. Garlic's going to go in in a very simple way. I'm just going to cut across the equator of this head of garlic here, drop it in and I'm going to put it onto the fire turning it on to high and let it come to a full boil to dissolve all the salt and the sugar and then let it cool completely. Now the remainder of our liquid for this brine is two and a half quarts of water and a bottle of dark beer. Our cooled flavorings here, the salt, the sugar, the garlic and the chili are going to go into the brine container here and I'm using a 12 quart stock pot because I can fit two chickens right in here. Now I'm going to slide these two chickens. These are roasting chickens. You want ones that are three and a half to four pounds. I'm going to slide the two of them into this pot. I want to make sure that they stay submerged. So I'm going to kind of push them down into the brine like that. And then I'm going to put them into the refrigerator four to five hours in the refrigerator for the brine to affect the meat, to give it that wonderful succulence and to season it just right. When you remove the chickens from the brine, dry them off really well. Then truss the chickens, tying the legs together with a good length of twine. Tuck the wings under so they won't burn. And skewer the chickens butt to butt through the cavity. The spit forks slide onto either end and then you're ready to grill. Now my grill is equipped with an infrared burner across the back so I could just spit cook these chickens entirely with the use of that. But I love the flavor of live fire cooking. So instead I have built a little fire, a charcoal fire here in the front third of the grill. I'll show you what that looks like. And I'm going to augment it with a few of these pieces of branches that I've collected in the yard here and that's going to give a really nice smoky flavor to the chickens. Put the spit on, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to let those chickens cook for about 45 minutes. After 30 minutes or so I'll start checking their temperature with an instant read thermometer. To add even more flavor to the chickens, I like to make a garlic butter baste while they grill. I melt a good sized chunk of butter in a pot and add to it some sliced garlic. After it's all melted, I brush the chicken with the garlic butter every few minutes until the skin is crispy, caramelized, and the temperature of the chicken reached someplace around 155 degrees. Then these steaming beauties are ready to be carved up and served. Since this chicken was brined, there's no need for a little sprinkling of salt over the top of it. Um, but I do like to decorate the platter with a little something fresh. And I have some sage from my garden. I've just put out some simple roasted tomato salsa to go along with it because well, the chicken's just so great, you don't really need a whole lot of accompaniments for it. 